but there are things that you do know, right? So help them learn that because that's e equally as important as what they're learning in school. Baby, I paint the sky blue. My greatest creation was you. Hey, you guys, welcome to Kale Cupcakes and Diapers. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you're interested in healthiest eating or anything dealing with babies and kids. And follow me on Instagram at Kale Cupcakes and Diapers. All right, enough of that promo. Let's get started. So the time has come for school to be back in session. And whether you're in a city that requires remote learning or you're just a concerned parent that has decided to leave your child at home instead of sending them to school, this can be a tough time. I am already in my children's room right now trying to get things ready. I know many parents are concerned about remote learning. I wanna go ahead and share six tips that might help you prepare you and your child for remote learning success. First thing, you need to have a dedicated space. Wherever you decide to put your child for remote learning, you need to make sure that it is a place that is consistent and one that they go to all the time. This way, anytime it's time for them to go to this space, whether it's a corner, whether it's a room, once they go to the space, they'll automatically know what time it is. When trying to decide which space is going to be, you need to make sure that it's not one that's high traffic because you don't want your child to get distracted, right? So you'd wanna make sure that it's not in the living room next to like a running television. If you or someone else in the family is gonna be watching TV, you don't wanna have your child's place right next to you because they're gonna be watching what you're watching. Or if you have kids like mine, you don't want the remote learning space to be by the kitchen because for some reason, you know, every 10 minutes, they're gonna wanna snack, right? So you wanna make sure that the space is um, a dedicated space that's away from any activity. Tip number two is to stick to a routine. I think with people in general, despite their age, um, routines really just help you know what's coming next. And that's great when you have little kids because that will likely minimize their tantrums and meltdowns. The routine should be something that would be in place if he or she did have to go to school. So you're getting up, you're washing, you're brushing your teeth, you're getting dressed, you're eating breakfast, you're getting yourself ready for the day. That's a normal routine for kids who are getting ready to go to school. And even though they're doing remote learning in your home, you want it to still feel like school. You don't want to feel like, oh yeah, I'm just at home and I'm just going to roll through. No. It's, it doesn't go that way. You have to make sure that the kids stick to this, um, stick to a routine. We don't know how long this coronavirus is going to last or how long the remote learning is going to be a possibility or a mandate. So you still want to make sure that your kids are following what they would have to do once this is all over. Putting on real clothes, no pajama uniforms up in here, okay? You know, just put on a nice shirt, put on something to look presentable, not only to the instructor and to your classmates, but to also, once again, hone in the idea that this is not at home. Like, even though I'm home, I'm not at home. I'm at school. Think about it. If you went into a doctor's office and the doctor didn't have on a lab coat or whatever the case may be, a medical coat, and he came up in there with some jeans, some Tims, and a baseball cap or something, you would be looking like... What's going on? Same thing with the students. You want them to look like students. They're not looking like they're going to bed. They're not looking like they're getting ready to, you know, like they just put their finger in an electrical outlet. No, okay? You want to make sure your kids are presentable and ready for school. Tip number three is be prepared for breaks. Being online in front of like a computer or in front of books all day is very, very tedious. And a lot of, and it uses a lot of brain power. And so, especially with younger kids, they're going to need some breaks. If you're doing homeschooling, meaning that you, the parent, are the actual teacher, make sure that the breaks are built in. Um, and if you are dealing with an actual institution um, and a teacher, the teacher should already have breaks built in. But if she, he or she doesn't, and you see that your child is struggling, definitely communicate with your child's instructor. Breaks can really go a long way. So if you see that your child's instructor is not incorporating breaks, definitely let him or her know that this should be a requirement. Some kids need peace and quiet just to kind of like gather their thoughts and there are other kids who are like mine who act crazy as I don't know what and they need to run around and just let off some steam. 
So if you have a child who is like really just gets overwhelmed and needs some peace and quiet, make sure that he or she has that space. It doesn't have to be anything special, you know what I mean? But maybe they need to go in the room for a minute. Maybe they need to go, if you have like a, a patio or backyard or something to get some fresh air just to kind of calm their thoughts. Make sure that they have that available. If your kids are like mine and they need to, you know, sitting down for a long time might have them going, you know, a little nuts. So they need to kind of move their bodies. You can go to YouTube, Go Noodle, which is something that I mentioned in one of my older videos where I talk about what I do for fun with the kids. Go to Go Noodle. They have a lot of dance routines, a lot of, you know, quick exercise, um, exercise, um, episodes, what is it? Uh, episode of uh, videos exercise videos that are very short but it's good enough to get the heart rate up and to kind of help your child relieve any stress or any you know just uh, it helps them release release any of that tip number four is expect to do some learning outside of the classroom and this is definitely geared towards parents who whose children are doing remote learning through a, a institution or through like an actual teacher a lot of times I know it's really stressful, especially if you have to go to work or if you're working from home or even if you're a stay at home parent, you know, once the kids go to school, a lot of times we forget about them like, OK, well, they learned what they needed to learn. And, you know, that's what the teacher's for. And then that's it. No, 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 no. Parents are supposed to teach as well. Whereas, the, you know, the parents and the teachers should have a relationship. They should be partners. Not, okay, the teacher, y'all do what y'all do, and then when it's done, then it's done. No, 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 no. Especially with remote learning, you know, the, the kids aren't really getting the full classroom experience, okay? Because in school, you learn not only from the teacher, but you learn from your peers, you learn from older grades, younger grades, you know, everybody. You know, when you're at school, you learn from everyone. And in remote learning, yes, everybody might be on video camera, but it's a different dynamic. So this is definitely the time when parents need to sort of step up and help their children learn. Now, when I say learn, I don't mean you have to sit there with a book and a pen like, okay. 10 plus five. No, none of that. You know that you can leave that for the teacher, but you can make learning fun. And if you make learning fun, it'll be more interesting for both you and your child. So if you have like the preschool set, right? You can do um, a, like a scavenger hunt. If you're trying to teach colors, okay, find me something that's what? Red, okay, find me something that's yellow. That's something that helps them learn about their colors but it also gets them moving and it's fun if that's too easy okay find me something that begins with the letter b find me something that begins with the letter l you know just give them something that it's more of a game but they're still learning and that will help you get great success if you have an elementary school student um i know we're not teachers and that's a lot of times the the stance that parents take well i don't know this stuff i'm not a teacher and i understand that but there are things that you do know, right? So help them learn that because that's e equally as important as what they're learning in school. And so if you have an elementary school student, right? Um, like first, second grade, you're trying to teach them the value of money. Why don't you guys play store? Pretend, you know, give them some fake money. Okay, we're at a supermarket. Um, pretend like you want to come shopping. Put price tags on things. Help them really be able to understand what money is. How much does how much does a dollar equal? How much does a quarter equal? You know, and then that will help them learn money. Right? It's a game. It's fun, but you're still learning, and that's key. Tip number five is just make sure you have the necessary supplies. Okay, um, younger kids, you know the usual, the stationary stuff, the you know uh, paper, pencils, crayons, all that kind of good stuff, and then also make sure you have your electronics necessary, whether it's a tablet or a computer. I know a lot of schools, at least my children's schools, they've been sending home materials, which have been great help, but I know it's always good to have extra, especially when you're dealing with little kids. Things go missing, things get broken. So it's really important to make sure you have all the necessary supplies that you need. My last recommendation is KISS, and I got this from my husband. KISS means keep it simple, stupid. That means sometimes, you know, we do too much. We don't have to do much. All you have to do is provide the basics and your child will flourish. 
I know Chrissy Teigen's little homeschool went viral. Everybody's like, oh my God, that's beautiful and that's amazing. And it really is, but it's not necessary, right? Simple tools, simple um, spaces, simple products or items, whatever you have is good enough. Just make sure you're organized about it. I'm gonna show you my keep it simple, stupid corner that I'm doing for my, my kids. You know, it's, it's very minimal, but it gets the job done. And unfortunately, during these times when space is limited, money is limited, um, patience, time is limited, you know, you gotta keep it simple. Do you guys have any other tips that might help parents, might help me? Cause trust me, I don't know it all. Um, this is just some things that I've learned along the way, but I'm sure there's a lot more that I can do. So please let me know down below if you have other tips, other comments. Um, are you stressed out about school starting? How old are your kids? Let me know. All right, until the next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.